Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Bella Luna. I am part of a trio of witches known as the Bitchy Witchies. We do a podcast and we do this YouTube channel. If you are new to our channel, like and subscribe so you can get notifications of our latest and greatest videos. So today I want to go over with you my top 10 crystals for non-crystal users. So some of you may be wondering, what the heck does she mean by that? Well, contrary to popular belief, not all witches like crystals. Just like everything else, each witch does their own thing and crystals are just not my gig. And I know I'm not alone with that. Honestly, I kind of find crystals boring. And again, like I said, I know I'm not alone. Having said that, there's times when I do feel that perhaps a crystal or two are what's needed for my particular spell work, ritual, or whatever I'm doing in my magical practice. So I do have some go-to crystals, and I thought that I would share that with you. So for all you non-crystal witches out there, allow me to lend you a hand and go over my top 10 crystals, and if you like them, use them. So the first crystal is hematite. Hematite is ruled by Saturn, and it's actually known as the Stone of the Mind, which I just absolutely love. And it increases your intellect and your ability to perform analytical functions. And it also helps to deepen your concentration. Now, I'm a very analytical person, so I absolutely love that. It also puts you in touch with your physical body, but also your sensual body. It's a powerful grounding stone, so it's great to use when you're grounding. It instills strength and stability, and it really helps anchor you to the physical plane, thus a good grounding stone. It helps to align your mind and your spirit with the physical reality. Hematite also is great to help with staying focused for long periods of time. So if your mind wanders a lot, you may want to think about having hematite around. And it also helps to protect against unwanted influences, whatever that may be. For those of you who may be a little on the shy side or lack some confidence, this is also a good stone to keep around. And it's really good for legal matters. And if you're working out complex issues. And last but not least, it actually helps to attract various types of opportunities from money, prosperity, success, getting a promotion, those types of things. So some of the examples of workings that I use hematite specifically for is I like to use it with legal spell work, so court cases, and then also for spell works for prosperity. The next crystal is the moonstone. So moonstones are associated with both lunar and feminine energies. It's actually very representative of female empowerment. Now, the moonstone is actually known as the stone of female sexuality, which is the sexuality that actually focuses on the emotional sides of things when it comes to sexual activity. It also holds power of prophecy and divination, and it helps to nurture your intuition. Now, if you are one who easily gets anxious, issues with depression, nightmares, fears, this actually helps alleviate a lot of that. So again, another good crystal to keep around if that's something that you experience routinely. It helps to stabilize your higher energies. And if you have opposing qualities or issues or thoughts within you, it helps to balance those out. Now, the moonstone has a counterpart, the sunstone. And if you use those together, it helps to establish and create the perfect yin-yang balance within yourself. So some of the examples of workings that I do with moonstone is I use moonstone during spell work for empowerment and anything to do with spiritual balance. Also, as a side note, if for some reason you can't go out and make moon water, you can actually put the moonstone in the water and that will actually create moon water for you. 
The next stone is sunstone. So a lot of the qualities you'll see in the sunstone is its counterpart or mirror image of the moonstone. So the sunstone is the ultimate stone of masculinity and male empowerment and also male fertility. It also represents solar energies. It helps boost personal strength and motivation and energy. So it counteracts your laziness, which I can definitely use. And it also helps to bring to the surface your creativity. And of course, it also, because of the motivation, helps to stop any procrastination that you're doing. It also helps to guide your mind, body, and soul to various opportunities. So success, prosperity, wealth, promotions, those types of things. This is something that you'd want to have a sunstone around. It also protects against negative thoughts and negative influences of other people by promoting a lot of optimism and just happiness and joy in your life. The sunstone is also a stone of sexuality. But unlike the moonstone, the sexuality focuses on the physical connections during sexual encounters. Again, you use that in conjunction with the moonstone to create the perfect yin-yang balance within yourself. So some examples of workings that I use sunstones for is on any type of workings of personal strength. It could be with spell oils or spell work, rituals, anything for attaining goals, and of course staying balanced along with the moonstone. So the next crystal is the red jasper. Red jasper is really good for your creativity. It helps you to express yourself and your individuality without being shy or shame about it. Red Jasper is also a protector of the heart and soul, and it increases your inner personal strength as well as your physical energy. Now, the Red Jasper also stimulates and increases lust, libido, and your sex drive. And while it's at it, instills that sexual confidence in you. The nice thing about Red Jasper is that it also helps to reduce anger and aggression. So any leftover energies from an argument that you just had helps to ground those excess negative energies. It also helps you to stand up for yourself and to have courage. It dissolves a lot of your fears, your phobias, and your anxieties, and you're more willing to take risks. So some examples of workings with red jasper are workings, again, of strength, of confidence, and it could be spell work or rituals. The next crystal is smoky quartz. So I love smoky quartz. I think it's beautiful and I love the fact that it empowers the dark moon energies because I work with the dark moon a lot. It represents courage, strength, and stability. It helps to strengthen the areas within yourself that are stressful or weak. And it helps to ground any excess energy that's created by any stress that you have. It also provides really good energetic protection. If you are somebody who has a hard time maintaining focus for long periods of time while you're meditating, this is a stone that I recommend that you try to use. It helps provide that stronger connection between the earth and your physical self. So some examples of working that I do is I definitely, of course, use this in any dark moon spells or rituals. I use this when grounding and also for any strength and or power spell work. The next crystal is clear quartz. Now, clear quartz is actually an amazing amplifier. So most of what I do with that has to do with its amplification. So it amplifies energy in general and so I like to use that in spell work, but it also helps to amplify energies of other crystals. So if you're going to use another crystal and want to amplify that effect, you can also use clear quartz as well. It also amplifies spiritual energies as well as full moon energies. Now, clear quartz also helps to encourage clarity, clarity of the mind, the body, 
and the soul. And it basically does that by helping to redirect and get you to focus more on the authentic beliefs versus the false beliefs or those questionable beliefs. It also helps to heighten your sensitivity to the more subtler energies and helps to move and transform your intuition into more of a true psychic power. Overall, it helps increase your spiritual awareness and it cleanses and dissolves that which no longer serves you. So examples of workings that I do with clear quartz is, as I mentioned earlier, I will use that to amplify the energies of spell work, and I like to add it to some of my spell oils. I have clear quartz crystal chips that I use in the spell oils, but you can also use the larger ones if that's all you have. The next crystal is tiger's eye. Tiger's eye is a great stone to help you stay grounded and centered. Even if there's a lot of hustle and bustle going on around you, it represents power and resilience and fearlessness and courage. It boosts your confidence and it helps you realize your self-worth and your personal power. It's also a great assistant in manifesting your wants, your needs, and your desires. So for instance, for wealth and abundance or reaching difficult goals, this is a stone that you'll want to have along with you. It also, of course, encourages lust and enhances endurance. And in this case, I am referring to sexual endurance. And it also amplifies the physical pleasures of sex. Now, this stone is a really great stone for protection as well. It protects and strengthens the will. It helps to create a shield. It helps you to defend yourself. It even protects your finances and your business. So some examples of workings that I do with this stone is also with grounding, as well as I like to use it in prosperity and success spell work. And I will also put some tiger's eye chips in a couple of my spell oils as well. The next crystal is black obsidian. This is another stone that I use more often than others because again of its ability to empower the dark moon energies. This also is really great for balance and grounding and it helps to promote realistic thinking because again of its grounding properties. And it helps break through those illusions and if you're being deceived, it helps reveal some of those deceptions. It offers strength and resilience during times where you may be a little bit more vulnerable or weak or uncertain. And it offers support and emotional strength when you are performing shadow work. This is a really good stone to use when you are trying to establish contact with spirits. And the stone itself is a really good medium to use for scrying. So you will find that some scrying materials and scrying boards are actually made made from black obsidian. Some of the examples of workings that I do with black obsidian is I use it during shadow work. I break it out, of course, during my dark moon spells or rituals, and I also have it around for divination. The next crystal is selenite. So selenite promotes spiritual growth and development, and it brings us into alignment with higher realms and higher planes. It has an actually fine high vibration that is what helps it for contacting angels and spirit guides in particular. Now selenite is really good in helping one achieve a dreamlike state and aids in astral travel. It also helps to heighten your intuition. Selenite has a lot of powerful lunar energy and this energy is very pure. It's empowered during the full moon. In fact, this is when it's most powerful during the full moon phase. But what's even more awesome is that it in turn amplifies the full moon energies. So great to use during full moon workings. So some examples of workings that I use selenite with is, what a surprise, of course I use it in full moon spells and rituals, but I also use it during ancestral work and any spirit guide communication. The last crystal is fluorite. Fluorite amplifies the waxing moon energy. It promotes harmony and emotional release, and it also helps you to connect with others. 
Fluorite's really great for clearing away any stagnant emotions, things you haven't let go, energy blockages that you're trying to work through. This is another stone that enhances intuition. It helps promote dream recall. And this is a really good stone if you are somebody who is struggling with shyness, low self-confidence, low self-esteem. It helps get rid of your negative thought patterns, any bad feelings about yourself, and any false beliefs. So some of the examples of workings that I do with fluorite is any type of release rituals, any kind of spells having to do with confidence, instilling confidence, and of course, spells specific to the waxing moon or any rituals specific to the waxing moon. I hope that you enjoyed my little summary of my top 10 crystals for non-crystal users. If you have any questions about any other crystals, you're more than welcome to leave a comment below. Just know it won't be me answering. It'll probably be Miss Mountain Gypsy because I don't really know very much other about crystals because I'm a non-crystal user. With that, thank you for joining me and we will see you on the next video.